Good evening and welcome to the news. I'm Ryan Eckford. First tonight, there's a push to get more people living and working in the Newcastle CBD. A campaign is underway to attract, to attract investors from across the state for projects which will hopefully revolutionise the city's landscape. Three high-rise buildings are currently being proposed in the Newcastle CBD for development. It's part of the new urban renewal strategy. We want to have a new refreshed style of, um, of our city that we're going to live in and that's why this program is, um, you know, is fantastic for Newcastle. The plan will bring more than 10,000 jobs along with 6,000 new residents to the city. So attracting investment from across the state, across the country and across the world potentially um, allows uh, more employment and more uh, housing for people that are currently in Newcastle and those that might like to live here in the future. It's believed the buildings will play an important role in the modernisation of the city. The plans are currently on display at Newcastle City Council. Vashti Denning, University News. Youth unemployment in Newcastle has risen well above the New South Wales average. University graduates say they are finding it hard to get a job, even with a degree. We're told education is the key to success. The latest figures released today from the Federal Department of Employment indicate youth unemployment in the Hunter stood at more than 32%. There's only a handful that have gotten jobs. First of all, straight out, that, that was... I'm very jealous of those people. And then people who have been looking and also working a lot for free. Uh, it could be immediately improved by the injection of a lot of uh, entry-level jobs into the economy. Uh, and the only body that's really got the power to do that would be the Commonwealth Government. Despite concerns, there remains high optimism within the youth sector. Rose Doherty, UON News. The University of Newcastle is set to introduce a strict non-smoking policy across the campus. The policy aims to increase student health. The University is the first in regional New South Wales to introduce this kind of anti-smoking policy. To combat the risks of smoking for students, the university has introduced a healthy UON program. It aims to enhance the physical, social and psychological health and wellbeing of the university community. The policy will commence on July 1. A feud is erupting between Whiteridge residents and a developer over a proposed block of units in the suburb. Simhill Living is proposing to build 87 townhouses on land previously set aside for the East Charlestown bypass. Even though the proposal meets zoning and DCP regulations, residents believe the rezoning was put through under false pretenses. This land was rezoned under the premise that there'd only be 50 new dwellings in total along the edge of Fernley track and they're talking about 87 on what is essentially about a third of that area. A final determination on the proposal is expected later this year. Lake Macquarie City Council will cut town centre program funding, which was used for the removal of graffiti. Council says few centres actually use the funding for cleaning up businesses. While volunteer services provided an extra option for removing vandalism, free cleanup kits are still available for businesses, but it's providing more than a financial burden. You know, I've got a business to run, I, I can't sort of spend a day out here repainting or, or trying to get rid of the graffiti with, with some graffiti wipes, it just doesn't work like that. So um, my business is more important than, than cleaning a bit of tagging off a wall. Business owners say the timely removal of vandalism acts as a deterrent, but fear graffiti will keep coming back. The debate over the value of unpaid internships has escalated with critics suggesting it is unfair and exploits students. However, those taking part say can provide invaluable opportunities to, the, to develop industry skills in a professional setting. Employers are now having to defend their internship roles amid claims they exploit student workers with too big a workloads and false promises of paid employment. Susanna Lynch from the University of Newcastle oversees the university student media program where students work unpaid. Seeing the students that have worked with us that have gone out there and been told by their future employers this is what makes you stand out and we'll, we've given you this job and given you this chance because you've got all this experience that the other people don't have. For more information on the rights of interns, contact Fair Work Australia. Emily Burley, Newcastle News. And that's the news for this evening. I'm Ryan Eckford. Enjoy your evening. Good night.